for this section, we're going to look at inverse relations. So when we're looking at the inverse of a relation, the way that we write that is um, with r, and the exponent is a minus 1. And all a relation, or the inverse of a, of a relation is, is switching x and y. So switch x and y. And then that helps us determine if a relationship is one-to-one. -one. So if a relationship is one-to-one, -one, that means the relation and inverse are functions. Are functions. So for instance, if we have like number one, We've got some ordered pairs here, and we need to figure out, first of all, what the inverse of this relation is. All we have to do is switch our x and y values for each of these ordered pairs. So our first ordered pair, instead of being 1, negative 2, it would be negative 2, 1. The second ordered pair, instead of being 2, 4, it would be 4, 2. The third ordered pair would be negative 1, 3 instead of 3, negative 1. And then the same thing on the last ordered pair. Instead of 4, negative 2, it would be negative 2, 4. And then we have to determine, is our first relation, is that a function? And remember, it is a function if our x's don't repeat. So as long as our x's don't repeat, we're good. Which on the first relation, we've got 1, 2, three, four, none of those repeat. So that is a function. We would just say yes. Now looking at the inverse, we need to determine is that a function? And for this, we're going to look at our x's again. So we've got negative two, four, negative one, and negative two. So that won't work because both of these um, x's negative two are repeated. So that would be no, meaning this is not one-to-one. -one. The only way this would be one-to-one -one is if both the relation and the function, or both the relation and the inverse were um, functions. Um, all right, let's look at number three. So you may have a problem like number three um, where you have a table. And for this, the, um, the inverse is just going to be flipping, putting your y's, as your x's and your x's as your y's. So let's look at um, doing that. So first we've got, let's see, we've got, <coughs> we've got, as our x's, we've got 0, 1, 8, and 11. We just need to match those up and switch them. So 0 goes with 6. So instead of our inverse being 0, 6, it would be 6, 0. Our next one would be, let's see, um, 1 goes with 2. So instead of our, our relation would be 1, 2, our inverse would be 2, 1. So we would just flip those. And then our last one would be, let's see, 8 doesn't have 1, which I'm not sure why it's there. But 11 has... Um, goes with 6, so we would flip that and make it 6, 11. So that would be our inverse. And then determining if our relation is a function, it would be a function because none of our x's repeat. Um, our inverse would not be a function because these 6's repeat in our x's. And then would this be 1 to 1? That would be no. So the only way that you can have a one-to-one -one relation is if a relationship is if your function and in, or your relation and inverse are functions. Now the horizontal line test is how we look at um, if an inverse is a function on a graph. So it's the opposite of with a relation. We use the vertical line test to see if it was um, a function. 
if we want to see if the inverse is, all we've got to do is look at the horizontal line test. And if both of the relation and the function are in the inverse are functions, then it's going to be a um, it's going to be one to one. So if we look at number four, for the vertical line test, this would pass. It means uh, that means the relation would be a function. The horizontal line test would also pass. So that would be a one to one relationship. All right, let's look at number five. So if we look at the vertical line test for the relation, that would be a function because it passes the vertical line test. These lines, vertical lines, don't cross that graph twice or intersect it twice. But if we look at the vertical line test or the horizontal line test, it would fail because it actually intersects that line three times. So in determining if this is a one-to-one -one relationship, we would say no. Nope. All right, so now we're going to look at some actual calculations instead of just looking at ordered pairs and graphs. So the inverse of a function is written as the f, um, actually. So if we have the inverse of a function f of x, f to the negative 1 of x would be how we wrote the inverse. And to find this, we're going to replace f of x with... Um, we're going to replace f of x with y, and then we're going to interchange x and y and solve for y. So I'll show you what that looks like. It's pretty easy once you get the hang of it. So let's look at number 6. We've got f of x is equal to 5x. If we want to find the inverse, we take out f of x and we re rewrite it as y. And then we are going to rewrite this entire thing except replace y with x and replace x with y. So we're just going to flip those two and then solve for this y here. And if we want to solve for that, we would have to um, divide both sides by 5. So y would be equal to 5 or x over 5. x over 5. So that would be our inverse. So our inverse of x would be equal to x over 5. That's how you would write your final answer. And we'll look at one more, a little bit of a more complicated one. So number 8, we have f of x is equal to x minus 8 over 3. First thing you're going to do is replace f of x with y. Rewrite everything. Then you're going to take out y and replace it with x. And then you're going to take the x we have here and replace it with y. And then you'll actually be solving for y that is here. So if we want to do that, we need to first get rid of this. This is just a, um, a multi-step equation that we're having to solve. So the first thing we got to do is get rid of this fraction. The only way we can do that is multiply each side by 3. So that will give us... 3x equal to y minus 8. Then we're going to add 8 to both sides. That's going to give us 3x plus 8 is equal to y. I don't know why I put 9. So that would be our, that would be how our final answer looked. Well, not our final answer. Our final answer would actually look like this. We would rewrite this as the inverse of x is equal to 3x, or the inverse of f of x, would be 3x plus 8. So that is finding a, um, that's finding a inverse when you're given f of x. So that's just finding the inverse of f of x. Now we're going to look at one last thing, which is verifying if two functions um if they're inverses. So you'll be given two separate functions and you'll have to determine if they are um, an inverse. And the only way they're an inverse is if f of g of x is equal to x and if g of f of x 
is equal to x. So we're using um, compositions to figure out if these are actually inverses, which I'll show you what this looks like. So for f of g of x, we're actually plugging in what g of x is. We're plugging that in for x in our f of x equation. And then when we look at the second part, we're plugging in this f of x for x in our g of x equation. And they both should equal x. So the first part, we'll look at f of g of x. So that means we're going to take this f of x, which is x squared plus 8, and we're going to plug in the square root of 8, or square root of x minus 8, for this x here, which you'll see, you, you would think it would look ugly, but it's actually going to work out. So when we plug that in, all we did was plug in our g of x for x, but that x is to the exponent of 2, so we have to add that. Let me actually move this down because that's in my way. x minus 8, the square root of that, and all of that's to the second power. Um, and then we just have to make sure we add this plus 8 here, which once we, um, once we look at this and simplify this, the square, um, anytime you have a square root squared, those cancel out. So what's inside of our square root, x minus 8 would come out, plus 8. This right here, negative 8 plus 8 would cancel out. So our final answer would be x. So we just did this part, it checks out. Now the second part is we have to do the opposite. So we have to do g of f of x. And we've got to take this f of x, which is x squared plus 8, and plug it in for x in our g of x. So we'll have the square root of, let's see, that would be x squared, x squared plus 8 minus 8, which you could put that in parentheses, but you really don't need to. Um, now, once we simplify this, it looks like it would be rough, but it actually isn't because this plus 8 minus 8 will cancel out, which will leave us with the square root of x squared. The square root of x squared is just x. So on both of these, both are um, compositions. They checked out. So these would be inverses. So I don't really have room for it, um, but you would just say inverses. And that is, um, that's in determining whether a pair of functions are inverse functions, which these two are. So all you do is check f of g of x, make sure that answer comes out to x, and then check f of, or g of f of x and make sure that answer comes out to x. So we'll look at more examples of these in class and go over homework problems, but that is it for this section, it's just inverse relationships or inverse relations one-to-one. -one. Um, and just make sure you get down all of this information from the video to help you with the homework as well.